So, motors and generators, hey, they are surprisingly simple things. All they are is a coil of wire and a bunch of magnets. Move the magnets across the wire, you'll generate a current. Put a current in the wire, the magnets will move and you'll get a motor, and that's it. So, electrically speaking, as machines, they're identical. Now, they only really depend on a few things. That is, the length of the wire, the strength of the magnetic field, the angle the magnetic field cuts the wire, and the speed at which it does it. That's it. The principles are equally very simple. Now, they've been with us for a couple of hundred years, and despite at their core being essentially simple machines, and that the principles govern them aren't that complicated, they've plagued us. And they've plagued us because, although that's the case, of course you have to build something that is in fact useful. And those techniques of building have improved, our understanding of materials has improved, and our motors have improved. Now, in the early days of motors and generators, of course, they weren't little more than a bunch of wires wrapped around a heavy core of steel with a bar magnet somebody had made by beating it with a hammer. That early days has stayed with us and we've created a whole series of motors known as radial flux motors. In a radial flux motor or radial flux generator, the magnetic field comes out parallel to the radius, hence the name, and then some bright spark said to themselves, hang on a sec, how about we make it parallel to the axle? And that's where we get axial flux from, because the magnetic field is basically two discs of magnets creating a magnetic field that is parallel to the axle. But if that magnetic field is going absolutely everywhere, and what we like to do is bung on lumps of chunky steel to direct the flux, so we get the best use out of the magnetic flux. And that creates motors that are relatively heavy. Now there is a third kind of motor. And this is called the circumferal flux motor, where instead of following the axis or following the radius, it follows the circumference. And we know these because that's exactly what a solenoid is. And in fact, linear generators and linear motors are very little more than solenoids. A solenoid, incidentally, is any coil where the length is greater than the diameter. That's a solenoid. We often lump, put lumps of steel in it or other lumps of magnets in it and think of that as a solenoid, but it isn't. The solenoid's the coil shape. If we take that coil shape and bung a magnet in it up and down, of course we get a linear generator, and if we put a current through it, of course we get a linear motor. Then somebody said to themselves, well, instead of making it go up and down like a bog-standard solenoid, how about we make it spin round and round, and that will create a circumferal flux motor or generator. And this was the brainchild of motion robotics. Of course, circumferal flux motors have been around a bit longer than motion robotics, if you check out the literature. But what motion robotics said they've done is built the first real working version. That's kind of interesting, because of course, it does come with its own advantages. You get the full use of the magnetic field for the magnets you've got available without having to faff on with things like howlback or rays or chucking in lumpy bits of silicon steel. And that makes it very much lighter. And so the power to weight ratio shoots right up there. I turned to Tinkercad and drew this because I thought it would give it a go, making a version of the circumferential flux generator. Not so much a motor, because motors aren't so much my thing, I'm really fascinated by generators, and remember, a generator and motor are identical things. Anyway, I won't make this a Tinkercad tutorial, because a lot of the techniques that I use to draw this I've already shown in previous videos, which are tutorial videos. So if you want to have a go at designing your own version of this, review the tutorials that I've already done, and it should be pretty obvious how that was drawn. But it is a surprisingly small number of parts. There are, in fact, only five parts when you print them, and there are only five 
four parts in the drawing. Now, this makes the best unit. It's got a foot that fits in there, and that's the best unit because it's going to sit there and rotate in that direction. Then we've got two coil holders that are going to go either side of this, which is the magnet rotor. The coil holders will form part of the frame, and there's some bearings in there, and they're skater bearings, which are 22 by 8 by 7. And once we, whoops, easy, once we put those together and fix them to the frame, we should be able to rotate the magnets. And the whole idea being that we're going to be using both sides of the magnetic field without having to do anything else with it, making a very light motor, the, sorry, generator, that can be 3D printed and should be, in theory at least, pretty good. Now these holes that you can see here are to take these magnets and these magnets are neodymium magnets and we're going to put them in north south north south north south and these are five millimeters by 15 millimeters for everybody who likes all those techie details. Anyway, we're going to wind the coil as serpentine coils. So we're going to wind them as serpentine coils using the serpentine coil winder that I've also done a video on. Right, once you've got your coil, what you need to do is bend it into a kind of a star shape. So this black plastic tape is the main leg, the bend goes there, and you bend it up so it makes a star shape. Now, if you're not sure how to get to the coil, then do check out the videos that I do on making serpentine coils, and equally the video I did on making the coil winder to make your life very much easier. We keep on bending it until we've bent that all into the star like that. Right, here's the coil holder and I've stuffed the bearings in and the star goes on like that. And you should notice that there's a little peg and a little mark. The bottom of the coil goes around the little peg and this points at the little mark and all you do is glue that in place. And what you should end up with is two coils and coil holders exactly like that. So on the frame, the foot gets glued into the bottom like that, and you'll see on the foot, there's a little raised portion. On there, you glue a piece of metal. Doesn't matter what it is, trimming knife blade, bit of uh, large washer, whatever it is, just glue a bit of metal on there, and then take one of your star coils, and that glues onto the little indentation, the lower one you can see here, so it glues on like that. So that it's like that. Now this is the main axle, it's just a printed rod, but in there you'll see a needle, it's a darning needle, and I'm going to use this as the main bearing, it'll go on that piece of metal that we glued in the bottom. Of course you could change that bearing, I mean you might want to look at magnetic bearings, or maybe an ordinary thrust bearing, or something like that, but that will shove through the magnet disc, and between the magnet disc and that coil we just put, we'll have a single washer. So with it in there as a test, what you'll find is it spins really easily and for a long time. So if I set that spinning, and I've got a voltmeter here reading 11 volts on it, and that will spin nice and happily. What we've got to do now, of course, is fit this one. And to do that, we take the axle back out, slide this in, and slide the axle back in. So if you think about it, with an axial flux generator, what you're trying to do is surround the coil by a total magnetic field. With a circumferential design, what you're trying to do is surround the magnetic field with a coil. So it's kind of 180 degrees apart, if you like. Because there is an issue. In order to get something to spin, we have to put it in an axle. And that means those coils can't go all the way around. There's a slash through on the motor, and they say they arrange it as a special uh, trapezoidal coil arrangement. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. The reason I, I've done it this way is because these serpentine coils are easy to make. And okay, we do miss this slight section here, but we still surround most of the magnetic field with coil. And I think it's enough surrounded that the ease of construction of this way is actually worth the little bit that we are in fact losing. So it's not quite circumferential, which is not all the way around in the way a solenoid is, but then neither is the circumferential motor that they have designed. And we've given up a little bit of surrounding it in order to make it much easier to construct. Now, with these coils, of course, this one and this one, the peak of them are in the same direction. As the north passes this leg, because it's a north-south magnet, the, man the south 
passes this leg. So if you join these two up together, what you would do is cancel them out. So you can't do that. What you have to do is rectify them first by putting a rectifier, a bridge rectifier on the legs of the coil as they come out, and then you can connect the two in series or parallel, depending on what you want. Now, now the benefits of something like this is there's no steel in it, so it's incredibly light, and of course that's going to increase the power density all by itself. There's no need to muck around with Halbach arrays, the whole thing can be 3D printed, and there's probably no difference between 3D printing or manufacturing it. Now if we did want to make it more circumferential, I guess we could put another coil up and down here to capture these edge bits if we wanted to, but I don't plan on doing any more testing with this at this stage, I'm just going to take motion robotics word for it. I quite like this design. I do plan on doing something else with it. I'm thinking maybe putting a wind turbine rotor on here and seeing what it does. We already know it does about 11 volts with uh, open circuit voltage, so the two coils are going to be about 22 volts. I'll, I'll publish the design as a work in progress, I think, on Thingiverse, and I'm going to take this and make it into a wind turbine and we'll see what the wind turbine does. Anyway, that's about circumferential motors and how to go around building a version should you want to. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.